Gordon and Isak have got Leicester and Ipswich up next. They should absolutely be on our radar. They both feature in my nine players to buy ahead of the game week 16 deadline. Hope you guys are well and you're looking forward to yet another FPL game week. They're coming thick and fast and we absolutely love it. In today's show, we're going to look at nine players to buy this week. And as I mentioned, two Newcastle attackers in there for obvious reasons with those fixtures. So look, without further ado, let's get started. We're going to look go by position by position. We're going to pick out three defenders, three midfielders, three forwards. No matter who you're shopping for this week, this will help you. Every player mentioned will be under 30% owned. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to buy Salah, Palmer and Saka. What's the point? We are going to start though with someone that is really obvious, right? Someone that feels template-y, but he's actually not. He's only in around 20% of teams, and that is Trent Alexander-Arnold. He is absolutely top of my wish list for defenders this game week. He's had a little bit of a break, right? He's been injured. He came back to the team with a brilliant performance against Man City, where he was super attacking. And we saw, we saw him hit the post in that game. Then we saw an a off-the-bench cameo where he got two assists. And then, of course, uh, game week 15, his fixture was postponed. But when we look at Trent, we know we're going to get absolute FPL quality. He's been the most creative defender in the league so far this season. Only three assists so far, but the underlings are good. His expected assist is around 3.8, 3.9. He's absolutely going to start scoring attacking returns soon. He also happens to play for what's been the best defence in the league this season. So average position versus Man City is on screen now. You can see like what Liverpool do well is they use that right-hand side so well. That triangle of Sabotsly, Trent, Gravenberch, and then obviously Salah ahead of them is where a lot of their creative uh, and, and goal threat comes from. So Trent is high on my wish list. He's absolutely worth the money. Remember, Trent is cheaper this year than what we've paid in years gone by. This is a guy that we've happily paid 8 million for. We've happily paid 8.5 for. Well, you can get him just over seven now. And I think he's a really strong buy. Right now, the entry point is good. And the fixtures for Liverpool aren't too shabby at all. When I look at Fulham at home, Leicester at home in 18, West Ham away in 19, these are clean sheet fixtures uh, for Liverpool. And uh, as I said, best defence in the league so far this season. Guys, if you could, I would love it if you could hit that like button nice and early, but also subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. We'll move on to Arsenal and Durian Timber. This is an alternative buy. Of course, if you've got the money, Saliba's an attractive option, but Timber's a little bit less. You still get the same clean sheet points. Saliba's not going to keep scoring with his bum. Arsenal are top of the ticker and this matters. The next five games for Arsenal. Everton Palace, Ipswich, Brentford, Brighton. There's three clean sheets there. They'll get three clean sheets out of five and that will probably be better than anyone else. If you want those steady six pointers, Timber is going to get them. Again, I'm surprised he's as differential as he is. Double Arsenal defence definitely looks on, along with Liverpool. They're clearly the best defence in the league this season. I don't see that changing for a long while, actually. Don't see that changing for a long while. Let me know in the comments if you think that there's another team out there that's going to challenge Liverpool and Arsenal defensively, but I can't see it. And sometimes we channel all our energy into these attacking purchases and transfers in FPL, when actually those six pointers really make a difference. The defence in my team at the moment is a shambles. The defence in a lot of your teams is a shambles. We're seeing plays, players like Greaves and Mikalenko and Rico Lewis, and I've got Lewis Hall in our teams. And really, we only want one of those guys alongside a Gabriel and a Trent or a Timber, you know. Um, if you are looking for a differential defender that doesn't cost much, he starts the season at 5 million, he's had some price drops. He offers attacking upside like very few others because Palace play with a wing back with wing backs. Mitchell on the left, but Manoz on the right is even more advanced. This was their average position map um, very recently. Manoz, he's had two goals in two, and I don't want to be chasing last week's points by going pick him. This isn't a guy that's going to score that many goals, but he does offer goal threat. He also offers assist threat. He's a very, very good footballer, the Colombian, from right wing back. And what we saw when Glasner, when he first took over, was clean sheet. Now, the fixtures haven't been there necessarily for Palace. They've got Brighton next, then it's Arsenal. But after that, Bournemouth and Southampton fixtures, you could see clean sheets. And I think eventually with Glasner, we will get them. So Manoz should absolutely be a player we're looking at if we're looking for 4.5 to 5 million and a long-term play when fixtures right now perhaps don't matter as much. Just put him on your watch list, um, even if he's not one to buy this week. As I said, the wing-back system is one that only really Man United... Um, at times we see Brentford 
Crystal Palace, they use it every single week. And we absolutely love that. I keep saying absolutely. What is wrong with me? These videos aren't too heavily edited. We'll leave that in. What other words do I say loads? Drop them in the comments, will you? Um, I know I know one term you're going to say I use. You're going to say, oh, like and subscribe. If you don't ask, you don't get. So I do genuinely appreciate all those that listen to me and go, yeah, okay, I'll listen to him. I'll hit that subscribe button. Um, if you haven't already, by the way, guys, you've seen on screen, there's a QR code. It's on throughout the whole video. It's to join my sleeper pick'em league. I'd love it if you want to join. Like I'm giving away every single week a £100 Amazon voucher or a PS5. Every week, without fail, someone wins one of those two. And all you've got to do is predict the results of 10 football matches. Home win, draw, away win. Last week, it was a PS5. Um, this week, it will be a £100 Amazon voucher. Another PS5 around Christmas, okay? Um, yeah, there's, it's free to download. It takes seconds. There's no gimmicks here. I've got a 7,000 budget to give away in prizes this year, hence the generosity. Um, so there you go. Look, I ask you for the likes and subscribes, but then you can ask me for a chance to win big uh, this Christmas. So look, let's go into midfield. Who's the obvious alternative in the differentials to buy? This didn't sound like an obvious move a week or two ago, but I'm going to list Enzo Fernandez as an obvious buy because I'm seeing loads of managers doing it. I'm doing it. He enables so much in your team. If you are moving away from an Umbermo or away from a Bruno, Enzo allows you 3 million, right? What are you going to do with that? Well, then you can go and buy a Trent or a Saliba or a Timber or an Isak. So I think Enzo feels obvious this week as we try and move a little bit of money out of our midfield. And if we're doing that, then he is flying right now, like absolutely flying. From the last four game weeks, We've seen three goals, two assists. And when I compare his numbers to Bruno's, Bruno in the red on this spider diagram, Enzo in the blue. These are measurements like, yeah, shots in the box, assists, penalty area touches, expected goal involvement, all the key stats, attacking stats. Bruno wins out for bonus points and chances created. But other than that, it's pretty much Enzo. Now, Bruno's had a good last four game weeks. But Enzo's had a better last four game weeks. Now, the Chelsea fixtures are insane. Okay, when we look at the Chelsea run, it can it can definitely continue. Brentford, Everton, Fulham, Ipswich, Palace. Cole Palmer isn't enough for us at the minute. Like if you want to win when Chelsea score goals, Cole Palmer, everyone wins. We've all we've all got him. Chelsea are top for goals. I think they're top for expected goals. This is of all teams in the league so far this season. They're second for big chances, right? Chelsea are the best functioning attack in the league right now. So why do we only have Palmer? Well, Enzo gives us a good 7th, 8th attacker. We can bench him when the fixtures aren't good or when he's out of form. Again, you can see the heat map here. Does this look like a DM? Chelsea bought him perhaps to be a DM and play alongside... I don't know, a Caicedo, but we've seen Lavia alongside Caicedo and boy does it free up Enzo. Enzo is effectively playing as a box-to-box -box eight at times, a dual 10 alongside Palmer. They're both playing number 10s at times and he drifts left, Palmer often right. This is the heat map. We can see attack at the bottom, defence at the top. He's often in those left advanced positions. He's sharing the set pieces with Palmer. He wears the captain's armband. He's got a lot of responsibility in this team. And Enzo Mresca absolutely loves him. Watch on Thursday night. I bet he's benched. It'll be the B team in Thursday night. He doesn't play in those games anymore. He's first choice in the Premier League. He's become a 90-minute man and a key cog. A key cog. Um, Anthony Gordon's a key cog for Newcastle. Newcastle are a funny team. They're a really, really funny team. And I never quite know where I stand with them. And outside of Gordon and Isak... I just don't go there. I don't look at Barnes or Murphy or Joel Linton. Like, you just don't buy their midfielders, Bruno Gamara's Tonali. But there's two players here, and Gordon's one of them with Isak, that can be reliable assets on their day. And this is purely a fixtures play. It's Leicester and Ipswich up next. Leicester at home, Ipswich away. Even Villa at home in game week 18 is a good fixture. And then they go to United and Tottenham, sure. Not the best, but for the next three games, no one's really got a better run than... Than, than Gordon and co. Now, Gordon did have a knock, so we saw him benched at the weekend. I expect he'll be fully fit and ready to go for the weekend. And when we see the average position again, like uh, in, a, in, a, in a recent start, I think this was against Liverpool, the 3-3 the three, three draw. Gordon had a great game against Liverpool, as did Isak. It's often a front two. Whoever plays on the right usually isn't as dynamic and less goes through them. But on the left, Gordon there and Isak, it's just like, you go do your thing. Us three midfielders of Joel Linton, Bruno Gamarez, Tonali, we'll all be disciplined. We'll stay in the middle there because we know 
Isak doesn't want to drop short and get on the ball. He wants to be on the last man. Gordon doesn't want to drop short and get on the ball. He wants to be the last man. So the midfield three don't, don't actually get too many opportunities. Hence, we don't buy them in FPL. We never really have. But it does allow cover for those two just to be front two, go do your thing. That's why Gordon's so good. Now, Gordon is considerably cheaper than Isak. Isak might be more difficult for many to get to. If you can't get to Isak and you can get to Gordon, genuinely consider it. Because Leicester and Ipswich offers upside like very few fixtures. When I buy my FPL players, I go, who can get me three or four goals? Uh, which teams can go score three or four goals? What fixtures am I targeting? Well, if we're looking at potential three or four nil goal games over the next two, Newcastle, tick, tick, Leicester and Ipswich. I'm not saying they'll do it. They're inconsistent, but they've got a good chance. Um, Gordon's useful. He's not obvious, though. He's an alternative, right? Enzo feels obvious because of the saving. A differential in the same bracket as Enzo is Ahmad Diallo. Why is no one buying Ahmad? I've been saying it for weeks. Ahmad's a wicked option. Um, he's a really good option. He's playing as a wing back, and people are like, oh, you know, he's a wing back, he's a defend he's not a defender. <laughs> he's a wide forward very, very often. Right? Amrim's got a history of this. At Sporting Lisbon, he converts converted a wing into a wing back for a start in eleven. He's done the same at United. It'll be Dallo or Masrawi on one side, less advanced, and on the other it's Ahmad. Every game so far we've seen Ahmad there. He was benched against Arsenal because of just pure minutes and rotation needed a rest. He came on at half time because it was like we're down in this game. Who's my first attacking sub going to be? I need to put the kid on because he's our best attacker at the minute. A lot goes down that right-hand side. I think we've seen five assists already this season and a goal. He's got a good number of attacking returns already under Amarim. He has a good understanding with Rashford and Bruno, which is useful for that attack. The fixture's a mixed bunch for your Man United. Sure, it's not the best of entry points. But if you're looking for someone with a bit of upside for a low budget... You know, around £5 million, pounds, you get Ahmad, like an entry to the Man United attack. It's not bad at all. I think I prefer Enzo just, but I like them both. I really do. So that's, that's you know, that's three really good options in midfield. Genuinely, I'm buying one of these three players this week. I think it's Enzo, but if I don't buy Enzo, it's Gordon or Ahmad. Um, and one player I can't buy, who I really, really want, he just don't can't get to him easily. I'm prioritising Trent and a midfielder. I can't get to Isak. And my, my obvious sell would be Solanke, but here's Southampton. I should give him another week. But Isak, again, like, best mid price forward in the game for me. Leicester, Ipswich, Villa. We've said it about Gordon. Isak's only 20% owned. I'm surprised it's only 20%. He should be higher. 8.6 million is not cheap. It's not cheap. But is he better than Watkins? Yes. Is he better than Solanke? Yes, but more expensive. Is he better than Jackson? I think he probably is. I think he probably is. Um, go buy Isak if you can easily, guys. If not, Jackson's still worth looking at. I prefer Isak to Jackson. Jackson sees quite a lot of early substitutions. He's still first choice, absolutely. Isak's more of a 90-minute man. Jackson will see a lot of 75 subs. Don't think that matters too much because when he's on the pitch, he's been brilliant. He is on the four yellow cards. I wouldn't let that put you off too much either. He's a little bit cheaper uh, than Isak, you save 0.4 and you do get better fixtures to be fair not over the next two necessarily but over the next six seven games it's a sea of sea of green for Chelsea and Jackson just like Enzo is really worthwhile like if you want to get on that Chelsea bandwagon of benefiting from all their goals Palmer alone isn't enough so you could punt on a Sancho or a Neto Jackson's way more reliable and I think has his uh, Enzo um, so he's a good alternative option Thank you, by the way, all for commenting and liking and subscribing. I do appreciate it. Um, I know I was joking earlier, but genuinely, I do appreciate it. Differential forward to buy. There's loads. Like, there's loads of good budget forwards this year. We own, many of us own a Jao Pedro or we own a, a Cunha. Chris Wood's been popular. But a proper differential, he's around 10% owned, is a slightly higher price forward. And that's Kai Havertz. I know what you're thinking. He's underwhelmed in game week 13 six points in game week 14 he got a two pointer last time out a five pointer he's ticking along nicely but if we look at upside fixtures and i keep coming back to this three or four goal games arsenal have two of them in the next three the home games havertz is very good at home home against everton and then in 18 home against ipswich if you want to punt kai havertz is a fair punt 
that so many have got double Arsenal defence or Saka and one Arsenal and they don't want the triple up that they don't even look at Havertz. I genuinely think he's an option, a legit option that you can hold as a long-term hold. He won't match Saka. He's not as good as Saka. He is still playing for a well-functioning attack as their number nine and he ain't that expensive at 7.9. Havertz is certainly on my radar. Again, I'm prioritising midfield and defence this week, I think, but I'm not absolutely ruling out a move for Havertz either. I like all these players on this list. As things stand, I own none of them. These are all players I'm looking at. They're on my watch list. I'm likely to buy Trent and Enzo. I would love Isak. I can't afford him. If I do make a forward transfer, it'd be Kai, but I'm going to give Solanke one more week, I think. Um, these are all really good buys. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. On your way out, do consider downloading the Sleeper app. Get playing. Brilliant prizes every week. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with another video very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.